Fulham, Bournemouth and Forest promoted to the Premier League from the Championship this season. I've got an up-to-date database on FM22 so we can go and play next season when they're in the Premier League. And we're going to find out how easy or difficult it is to keep them in that Premier League. We're going to start today with Bournemouth. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Clates and today we're taking over at Bournemouth. They've just been promoted to the Premier League alongside Fulham and then Forest through those playoffs and we're going to see today if we can keep them in the Premier League. They were so successful last year under Scott Parker, but Scott, you're out of here. We are in and the plan is, can we keep them in that Premier League? Of course, that's not an easy thing to go and do and I've just seen here We've got a transfer budget of zero pounds to go and spend. So this, this is going to be a challenge. We will have this first transfer window where I'm going to have to sell some players and hopefully bring some money in. I'm hoping that maybe we get a budget when the new season ticks over. Otherwise, this could be really tricky. We're going to have this first transfer window, then about half the season where we're going to set up with a tactic. Hopefully we'll be, you know, nice and solid. Maybe get some goals on the counter attack. That doesn't usually work, does it? Maybe we'll just go all out attack. We'll see. We're going to have half that season. Then we'll hopefully have some money to spend in January. And ultimately, we're going to find out, is it possible to keep Bournemouth in the Premier League with one season and one season only to do so? Let's... Let's get into it. Before we do get into it, a quick reminder that if you enjoy the videos on the channel and you're not already subscribed to the channel, which seems like there's lots of people watching but not subscribed. I see you. I see you. If you are enjoying the videos, make sure you do hit the subscribe button because we're not that far away from 20,000 subscribers now and that would be sensational to hit. Thank you so much for everyone who has been supporting recently. It has been noticed. Thank you so much. Let's, uh, let's go and see if we can save Bournemouth the next season in the Prem. Okay, we're in. We are the manager. We've been appointed. And I think the first thing you always check when you get to this stage, right, is how much money have I got to spend? And, well, at the moment, it doesn't look particularly good for us for this Bournemouth save. We've got zero pounds in terms of transfer budget or wage budget. It does say next season we've got seven million pounds. Now, I'm hoping that that means next season when we're in the Premier League. But it could be very bad news and we could have nothing to spend going up here. We have, though, been confirmed as promoted. Look, we've finished second. You can see that just about now we've had Forrest winning their playoff final against Huddersfield. Look, everything is up to date as it actually happened in uh, in real life. And what I'm going to do to start with is go through until that date where it ticks over to the new season. And we're going to find out if we actually get a budget or not. Let's go to then and I'll be back. Okay, so it has ticked over to the brand new season. We are officially a Premier League team with Bournemouth, but um, it's very bad news. In fact, it's worse news than we were even expected. We've definitely not got £7 million to go and spend. In fact, now our wage budget is £333,000 over budget per week. It's it's terrible, really. I think, I guess, I suppose that's because they've all been handed their new deals by being promoted to the Premier League. And now we've got to shift some players. I'm looking at this squad. If we're going to be able to survive the Premier League, we're going to have to sell a load of players and then bring in some for cheaper and hopefully make this work. It's going to be difficult. There are players that are listed, you know, Junior Stanislas, that could free up some wage. It's going to be really difficult. I'm going to try and sell some people. I've just had a look as well. We are predicted to finish finish 18th. This squad as it is, is probably not good enough to survive in the Premier League. 300 to 1 in terms of odds. So, so we're very much up against it. This is not going to be easy. I'm going to go into the transfer market now and see what I can do. I will bring you some updates as we go through before we play our first game of the season. And uh, wish me luck. In fact, before we do go into that transfer market, I've just done a little bit of an evaluation of the squad. I've thought about the type of system and tactic that we might use in this Premier League season. And I'm thinking maybe something like this, like a 4-3-3. The defence doesn't look too terrible. I don't hate it. I do wonder whether we need another centre-back in here, though. Mepham and Kelly, whilst they're quite good, Chris Mepham especially, really good in FM, 6 foot three. the type of defender that I do really like. I don't know if he's actually going to be that good in real life. Maybe a centre-back, maybe Phillips back on loan maybe permanent from Liverpool might be an option I just don't know with the money that we've got to spend uh, I don't mind the fullbacks Adam Smith and Zamora are okay the goalkeeper is pretty good in Travers I do wonder if there needs to be some something of a senior backup Will Dennis is the only other goalkeeper at the club that I'm seeing or at least in the first team squad so I wonder if we need that but is that a priority when we've got no money to spend not quite sure the midfield of Lewis Cook with Billing and Lerma in front I don't mind that actually as a three maybe 
somebody else in there on loan might be useful. And then out wide, Christy on the right-hand side and Anthony on the left. Jade and Anthony on this left-hand side cutting in. Quite like it, you know. I don't know if it's good enough for the Premier League. Um, we do have, though, David Brooks is coming back from his uh, treatment. He's been given the all-clear, which is fantastic news. A big, big happy story, that one. We do wish him all the best as he returns to, uh, to pre-season at the moment. So we've got him for next season, play maybe playing on this right-hand side. That could be useful. Again, is it good enough for the Premier League? Not sure. Then we've got Solanke up front with Kiefer Moore. Kiefer Moore, I feel like I can get them both, actually. Solanke and Kiefer Moore to score goals in a system. The other question is, I suppose, do we try and come up with something where they can both play? Or are we looking for another striker in the window? I'm not too upset with the squad. I think we can maybe sneak a survival here. It would be really nice to add to this a little bit. So I'm going to go out and see what players we can sell up from these players not in the first team squad. Jack Stacey's wanted by Wolves. Can we move him on? Marcondes is listed. Stanislas is listed. James Hill is wanted by Rotherham on loan. There's not much to sell in there, is there? I'm going to have a look at the uh, the reserve teams as well, the under-23s, etc. Move on. Any players that I don't think are going to start... Can we gather together a little bit of money and go into that transfer window? I'm going to go and do that now and let you know how I get on. Let's go through to the first game of the season where I've done some transfer business. I will see you then. Okay, so that was uh, extremely stressful. That was very rough. There has been a lot of updates to bring you now. This has been... Probably one of the most difficult transfer windows I've ever had to navigate on Football Manager. It has been so difficult because of that massive wage budget. We were completely over the wage budget, weren't we? £333,000. I've managed to get it down now so that we've got a little bit of money in the bank and we've got a little bit of wage budget still available. I've made some signings, but mainly... I've made some sales. Well, my idea for this video was that it was going to be a sort of semi-realistic attempt at keeping Bournemouth in the Premier League. It's had to change from that because there was just no money. I've really, really struggled to uh, to bring... Well, I brought money in, but I've really struggled to be able to bring players in without selling loads. So I've sold an absolute shed load of players here. Look, David Brooks, I wanted to keep him. I wanted to use him, but he's been sold to Brighton for £8 million. Jamal Lowe has gone to Celtic. All of these players really I wanted to keep. What I've tried to to do is to sell players that weren't necessarily going to be starters so that hopefully any players I bring in will just replace those players. We've now got a tiny squad because I've sold Marcondes, Jack Stacey's gone, James Hill has gone for no near no money at all as well. He's a really good player or at least a player with lots of potential. He's gone to Newcastle. Uh, Nathan Mariah Walsh went on a Welsh went on a free. Greenwood Bevan Dembele went on loan. They are paying a decent amount of money, actually, to loan Dembele from us here at Millwall. Stanislas went on loan, too. They're paying money and also paying quite a lot of his wages, too. So that does free up some wage bill. And Ben Pearson did go out on loan as well. They are paying all of his all of his wages look £44,000 per week he's a good player I'd like to have been able to use him but without selling him on or moving him on on loan they do have a fee to pay for him at the end of his loan as well do Norwich without moving him on we'd have been able to bring in no players and I just don't think this Bournemouth team is good enough to stay in the Premier League I've got a bit of a plan the first one is a 35-year-old Jose Callejon who is going to be playing on the right-hand side. Still very good for 35 years old. I think I think you can see that, right? Even though he's, you know, he's getting on a little bit now. He's still got decent pace and agility, acceleration. He's got fantastic natural fitness. I actually think he's going to be a really important player for us. He was brought in on on a free transfer and he's only on £26,000. You can see where I've moved on Ben Pearson, for example, £44,000. Brought in, I know it's only short term term and very temporary but a really good player on a slightly cheaper wage I'm quite happy with that bit of business the next player I've brought in is Bubakari Sumari on loan from Leicester we're paying a slight fee for him but I think he just adds a little bit of Premier League quality to our midfield I'm quite happy with bringing him in 1.7 million pounds for have to have him on loan it's the only thing we could afford to do really I know it's a lot of money for a loan player but there wasn't other options we couldn't pay any money for people so in comes Sumari and then the final one that has been completed is is Jed Spence. Really good for Forrest last season on loan from Middlesbrough. I just thought because he can play all the way up this right-hand side, all the way up the left-hand side, and even if we need him to as a centre-back, it just made sense to bring him in on this loan deal. And the reason for that is... 
the squad is very small. If I just show you here by highlighting everybody, we've got 19 people in our first team squad. And if I was to show you the under 23s, if I go to the under 23 squad, there's nobody in here. And the under 20, under 18 squad, there's not really anybody in here as well. We are working with a wafer thin squad. It's going to be so difficult this year, but... One last thing to show you, Nico Schlotterbeck is also going to be joining the club on loan from Dortmund as well to boost our centre-back options. When we bring him in, I'm not too worried about things. I'm slightly worried, but not too worried about things. We've got a game against Newcastle. Now, this one, I'm going to go and play this game and show you how it goes, but I wanted to bring you an update of the squad before we got to that match. There are a few issues. Lloyd Kelly would usually be a start. In fact, if I do this here, if we go to pick without restriction, pick best 11, it would usually be Travers and Goal, Smith, Mepham, Kelly, Zamora, as we sort of showed at the start of this video. Cook, Lerma, Sumare as the midfield three. That does mean that Billing drops down to the bench and is a really nice option from that, that bench there. Callihan on the right-hand side, Slanky up front, and then Christy from the left, which does mean we've got Jaden Anthony as an option off the bench too. So the squad is, it's okay. I think we can still add to it. Schlotterbeck in there will add to it as well. I think we'll be looking a little bit more healthy. When we have this match here, though, if I do the quick pick, we're going to have to play Philip Billing as a centre-back with a youngster in Ibsen Rossi, who is a 21-year-old Italian centre-back. He's not very good, but he's going to have to start here against Newcastle. The rest of the team is, though, as you'd expect it to be. I'm going to go and play this Newcastle game. I'll let you know how we get on, and then we'll get back to hopefully doing a little bit more business. This has been... This has been stressful. I'll see you after this Newcastle game. Okay, it's actually a fantastic start that we've got ourselves off to here with Bournemouth in the Premier League, then beating our former manager, Eddie Howlock, with a 1-0 win at home at the Vitality against Newcastle. The goal was from Jaden Anthony in the first half. You can see it here. Look, it was a lovely bit of build-up. Ball over the top from Lerma. Little 1-2 with Solanke from Anthony there. Puts it in the corner. We've got ourselves a 1-0 win, and we were thoroughly deserving of this 1-0 win, actually. Newcastle did have chances. Travers in the goal, by the way. Sensational. Made some really big saves towards the end. I moved to this sort of 4-1-3-2 system for the second half to try and see it out. And see it out we did. It's a good start. But it does mean that actually back into the window we go, back into transfers we go. I'll be back actually at the end of the window to let you know how we've started the season and to catch you up on any other transfers that we do make. This is a solid start though for staying in the Premier League, isn't it? I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so the transfer window has now shut and the transfer deadline day has just gone past. We did take part in it because we have brought in some more players. We've also sold some more players as maybe you would expect. The season is also well and truly underway at this stage. I'm going to show you the matches that we've played so far, let you know on how we've got on in those ones. I'm also going to show you which players we've brought in and which players have moved on. This now is going to be our team up until January where I'm really hoping that we could get some more money in. If I go to the transfer screen here, I will show you that we've got £10,000 still remaining to spend and we are just about over our wage budget. I'm hoping, and it's sort of my grand plan here, is that we get some more money to spend in January because the club as a whole has got money. We're £81 million in the bank, but we just didn't get a transfer budget. Next season, we're going to get £7 million. I'm really hoping we can get some money in January. Otherwise, we might just struggle. I think we've built a decent squad at this stage, but... Is it good enough to actually properly survive? I'm not sure. We're going to need that money in January to bolster it. And I'm really hoping the club will say yes to that. I did actually make a board request for some more money as well. We asked for more transfer budget and more wage budget. They said no to both of those things. So we are where we are with this one. Let me show you the transfers first of all. Let me show you the squad and how it currently looks. So we have brought in some more players as you will have expected. If I sort this by the date, you can see since the last time we have completed that signing of Schlotterbeck who was already coming in on that loan spell. We spent a bit of money on him. Of course, these loans bringing them in, we're getting a higher quality player but having to spend a little bit of money to keep them on a non-permanent basis. It's not ideal, but without a transfer budget, we were kind of stuck with what to do with that. Schlotterbeck has come in to bolster the defence. I've then signed Sebastiano Esposito as another striker option. I really like Esposito in FM. I'm hoping a bit of pace up front. I mean, he's actually not that pacey, but he is six foot two. He's also very young. So maybe if he develops over the course of this season, he's going to be a decent option for us. He scores goals in FM usually. I'm hoping he can do so this time. Then on the other end of the spectrum, a very old player compared to Esposito. Ramirez has been brought back to the Premier League on a free transfer. I don't know if he's going to 
going to be a starter. He's on 18,000 per week, which I think we can just about afford. I just needed to bolster the squad. We didn't have enough players in there. So Ramirez is back from uh, his time in. Did he go to China? I think he went to China to start with, right? He's back in the Premier League anyway. Alongside another young midfielder, Romario Barra, who's been brought in on a loan. Quite a cheap loan, this one. I'm happy to have him in the squad. Again, might develop, might turn into a better player. Could be useful for us. And then finally... A less, uh, a less glamorous signing. Ryan Allsop has joined on a free transfer as a as a backup goalkeeper. Now I say backup goalkeeper. He's actually going to have to play some football matches very very soon. I've had to sign him because we've had a bit of a goalkeeping crisis. Will Dennis has been injured for a while now. He's nearly back. He's not very good though. Is the issue and most importantly, our main goalkeeper, first choice goalkeeper, Mark Travers, has picked up an injury and is going to be out for two to four weeks. That was six to eight weeks to begin with. We were struggling with a goalkeeper so much so that when I show you our results in a second. I will show you how we got on with a grayed out goalkeeper in our goal. It's always fun when you have to do that on FM, isn't it? But we did have to do that recently. I'll show you the other players that were sold too. If I sort this by the date too, uh, if we go here, Robbie Brady did join Bordeaux on loan. They're paying about 40% of his, of his wages, which I think was useful. We're going to get a little bit of money back from that too. Gavin Kilkenny, who is a youngster, is going to go and join or has joined Porto. David Brooks was the last one that you saw beforehand for £8 million. So not too much extra in terms of outgoings there, but some. Let me show you those results that we played since that brilliant win over Newcastle where we won one nil after that it kind of went a little bit downhill uh we had birmingham in the caraba cup second round we went out on a penalty shootout it was actually schlotterbeck who missed the vital penalty there in his first game for the club not ideal start for nico there but i'm hoping he bounces back from that there's been some okay results since then we've had three league games starting with everton away from home we drew this one 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 in fact i will show you the goals for this one it was Kiefer Moore who gave us the lead. It was a lovely through ball from Lewis Cook, actually. Kiefer Moore getting onto the end of it, starting ahead of Dominic Solanke in this one. Smashed it past the goalkeeper. 1-0 to us. Lovely start, but then just after half time, I want to say after. I think it was after half time rather than added time here. Dominic Calvert-Lewin up the other end. Popped it into the back of the net. We uh, end up drawing that one 1-1. Is that an okay result away at Everton? I think it probably is in the grand scheme of things. You can see we played quite well here, can't you? I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with our performances. We've been a bit unlucky in terms of results. The next game, I say unlucky in this one, maybe less unlucky in this one and more deserved this loss. We didn't really get into the game, as you see, against Leicester here at home. Lots of yellow cards from us, but that was about it, including a red card as well, actually, for Adam Smith. You see Ramirez made his debut. The performance is not great. Esposito up front. It was a Yanazai goal who uh, gave Leicester the win in this one. This goal here. Fantastic finish, to be honest. It was indeedy down the right-hand side, giving it back to Yanazai, and he just smashes that in look. Curls it in almost into that far corner. Really nice goal. Worthy of winning any game, and it did win this game here, and we were not great. I was hoping that wasn't going to be a sign of things to come, and I don't think it was. Because in the next game, this is where we had Sol Deval in our goal. If I click on this match here, it was against Forest, another promoted team, a team that we should be beating. And we actually probably just about outplayed, although our XG doesn't really show it. But the main story of this one is that Deval, who I can't even click on because he's not a real goalkeeper, a greyed out goalkeeper in our goal, did concede twice. But we didn't lose the game as I was expecting would happen. I'll show you the goals because some of them were quite nice. It was Sumare who gave us the lead from a corner here, headed in past the goalkeeper. He's not the tallest Sumare, but he did win that header quite nicely. It was Forrest who went up the other end and equalised. It was uh, Brennan Johnson here through to Drager, crossing to Sam Surridge. Good finish from him past our grayed out goalkeeper there. By the way, Forrest, I'm thinking I might do a similar video to this one where I tried to survive in the Premier League with them. That one might even be more of a challenge than this Bournemouth one. There you see Callihan, by the way. First goal for the club after joining on a free transfer, smashing it in, but it wasn't enough to win us the game. Lewis Grabben going down the other end, giving it back to Drager, who gets his second assist of the game. Da Costa heading in past Deval. If that wasn't a greyed out goalkeeper, if that was Travers in goal, you might have seen him save that. We might have won this game. Maybe we deserve to win the game, but you know what? I'm okay with getting a draw away from home. If we draw our away games and pick up some points at home, I think we'll be okay here. What I'm going to go and do now is play through these games up until January, where the January window will open, and then we'll go from there. There's, I'm going to go and play a whole load of games, let you know how we get on. I will see you in January.
Okay, so it is now January then. As I mentioned, we go through to the 1st of January. The window has just opened up again. So far, we've not been given any more money. But I want to show you the results that we've had since that last game that we saw, which was against Forest with the 2-2 draw. We've been... We've been okay. We've given ourselves a real chance of staying up. Actually, if I show you the table, we are 12th in the league after 16 games, 20 points. You're sort of aiming for 40 points, aren't you, to stay in the Premier League. Halfway through the season, we're on 20. We're on course. I think you could say that we're on course. It's actually Newcastle, Palace, and then Forest who are in the bottom three. Fulham are having a great season just above us, look, in ninth. We've given ourselves a really good chance. I'll show you the results here then. After that Forest game, we played Palace and lost. We drew to Southampton with a 2-2 draw. We then lost to Liverpool and then City back-to-back. -back. Playing those two back-to-back -back was horrible. Did not enjoy it. One bit conceded five, scored zero. But then, after that look, have a look at the October that we had. We drew 1-1 with Villa. We beat Arsenal 4-2. That was our first win since the opening day of the season. But a 4-2 win with goals from Jaden Anthony, Mepham, Schlotterbeck and then Solanke at the end. Very nice indeed. And we backed it up three days later on with a 3-0 win against Leeds. Again, Jaden Anthony on the score sheet. Sebastiano Esposito scoring twice. Esposito more recently has turned into a real player for us. I think he's up to six league goals now, which is, you know... That's all right. I think you take those. It was a 3-0 win against Leeds, then a 1-1 draw with Wolves. Again, look at this October. Unbeaten, I think, until the very last game in October. Although we did, I suppose, the City game was in October too as well. We, we lost the first day of October, and then we lost towards the end of October too, where we lost to Brighton. Before that, though, a 2-1 win against West Ham. Solanke and Esposito with the goals. The 2-0 loss against Brighton was followed up with a 5-2 defeat to Spurs when we play the better teams in this division. We've seen it with the Liverpool game. We've seen it with the City game. We do tend to be on the receiving end of a little bit of a humbling. 5-2 loss, but we then beat Brentford 2-1. Goals from Esposito, a penalty, and then a winner in the 79th minute. To come from behind to win that game, as I mentioned, it puts us into a pretty good position. Just about halfway through the season, a few games off that halfway point officially. But 16 games in, 20 points on the board. We're doing okay. Five wins, five draws, six losses. And I'm hoping that this January window we can add to our team. I'll show you the team here. If I go to the tactics, you can see some of the stats as well. Look, you can see up front, Esposito's now got six goals from just three starts. He's really good. Solanke's got four goals from his uh, 12 starts now. Jaden Anthony's been good too. Three goals. And you can sort of see some of the appearances down the uh, the left-hand side here. Barrow's played five games coming in. Ramirez, not made a start yet, but has played four games from the bench. Jed Spence was out with an injury for two months, but before that was playing football. You can see third. 13 starts for Schlotterbeck in there. Lloyd Kelly and Mepham are also really good options. I quite like this team. Callahan, 12 starts from him. Just had some bids, actually. He or he was wanted by a few teams wanting to buy him. Should I sell him? Because he's 35. I'm not quite sure. I think we might need him for the second half of this season. But this team is doing okay. Some big defeats, some really nice wins. We've had some interest look in those players. There's those bids look for Callahan, Salzburg, Torino and Getafe all offering him actual money to take him. I've just triggered Chris Mepham's contract extension, by the way, to keep him at the club as well. I will show you the transfer budgets. We've got 128k to spend and we are over our wage budget. I can sort of tweak that, but I'm not really sure I need to too much because in terms of the board, they're quite happy and say that uh, we're on course to work within the wage budget, even though we're just slightly over the top. They don't like the fact that we've not been very attacking, but that's actually not because we've not been attacking. We are on a positive mentality. We are quite attacking. It's just that other teams are quite good. I'm going to do something now, which is going to feed into our next episode. We're going to do this over two episodes, by the way. Today is part one. That's why I've been sort of taking my time, making sure that I show you everything in the save. We're going to finish off the season in the next episode. But before we do finish off for today, I'm going to do something. I'm going to ask the board to increase our transfer budget. I'm also going to ask them to increase our wage budget. To be honest, they should do. We've got £85 million in the bank and the projection is that that's going to go to £158 million by June 20. 25. If we stay in this Premier League, which is looking like we are going to do, surely they have to back us by giving us some money. It'd be really nice if they gave us some in January. I'm going to continue once. I'm not sure we're going to get the response from them just yet. In fact, we don't. 
But in the next episode, we'll find out, are they going to give us money? And if they don't, we're going to have to do a bit more wheeling and dealing. And we're going to go finish off this season. So far in our fight for Bournemouth survival, then we're doing okay. That is where we will end it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me on this. I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, let me know in the comments down below and uh, leave me a like on the video too. If you have enjoyed this and you're looking forward to the next video, make sure you subscribe to the channel because then you won't miss it when it does come out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.